दी डायमंड सूत्र बुद्धा कुंड दी एक्सपीरियंस ओविथ हिम दिस इज अ सीरीज नोन एज डायमंड सूत्र डायमंड इज द हार्डेस्ट मेटल इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज थंडर बोल्ट प्रजन परमित सूत्र द प्रिंसिपल द सूत्र दैट इज लाइक अ थंडर बोल्ट दैट कट्स एनी डाउट any kind of mental state that creates an obstruction under this series i have chosen certain topics to speak to you buddhahood is an experience with you experience of harmony bliss oneness and harmony exists only when there is no conflict no conflict of any kind as such we have conflicts of many kinds within we fail to understand that we, we are part of one harmony the sun the same sun gives us light the same moon gives us the coolness a single sky remains spread like a vast canopy we may be sitting in one room breathing one another sitting on one couch and yet still there remains a conflict how can we experience that oneness that experience of oneness with is with which is the experience of oneness it is said in one of the episodes of the hindu scripture ramcharitmanas where sita was abducted by the demon king ravan and ram is far away across the ocean when hanuman reaches and meets sita in the garden where she was under captivity of demon king hanuman gives her the message of ram she is sitting on the ground she is sitting on the ground she bows down to the ground pays obeisances to it and addressing the ground she says me you convey the message of my love trust and reverence to my beloved shri ram and the other scene again opens ram is sitting with his younger brother lakshman and he immediately feels something Lakshman inquires and Ram is overwhelmed with that feeling Lakshman inquires so what is this going on why are you feeling overwhelmed he said Sita had sent me a message and how did she send the message she sent the message through the earth is the common denominator between you and i 
Beyond the oceans, beyond the time and the space, earth is the common denominator. When this is the situation, how can we remain alien to one another and remain in conflict? Great Sanskrit poet Kalidas he wrote a play called Meghdoot. Meg means rain clouds and Doot means ambassador, messenger. Rain cloud which is full of rain water becomes the messenger between he and his beloved. An imaginary beloved which exists somewhere in his inner horizon he is addressing to that inner being and sending the message to the clouds. When all these things are there and you have experienced this within. This is the experience of Buddha. This is the experience of inness. This is the experience of oneness. And when you have experienced this, the life undergoes a different kind of transformation. Transformation does not come by performing rituals assiduously, very religiously, remembering your mantras, prayers, offering regular prayers at one time. If these cannot bring the change in the inner horizon, your understanding, then these things have to be abandoned. I have heard a man, he was semi-wise. It's a word that I have coined. He had a donkey. And he have heard that taking a bath in holy Ganges purifies the person. So he used to carry his donkey because the donkey was lazy and he wanted to change the donkey into a horse so it will have a different kind of speed, different kind of bodily texture and that will enhance his status. So with that intention of donkey becoming a horse and that to a white horse, a beautiful one, he used to carry his donkey every day to Ganges, the holy river of Hindus, who it is said is a great transforming. It when you take a bath in the river, it washes your sins and so on and so forth. He used to give the donkey bath in the holy river and used to give him only the water from the holy Ganges, the Ganges water in an expectation that this donkey will become a horse one day. Do you think his donkey became horse? If you are intelligent enough, you know the donkey cannot become a horse. The third guru of Sikh tradition, Guru Ram Das, was a man of rituals before he came in the contact of Guru Angad Dev, the second master after Guru Nanak. 
So he had his old friends who knew him from the days of his ritualistic worship. So he told these friends came to visit him and they said, we are going to the Ganges, let's go there. So Guru Amar Das said, no, I cannot go because I have some work here, you go and take this pumpkin as my representative and give him a bath in the holy river and when you return we will cook this pumpkin after immersing in the holy water of Ganges this will become holier then we will have the meals prepared and eat as was directed these friends went, carried the pumpkin with them, give it a bath in the holy Ganges and return. When the pumpkin was cooked, it was bitter. So the people asked, address the master. This pumpkin is bitter. The master consented. I knew that this pumpkin is bitter. Bitter means it is, it has a different kind of understanding. Understanding of conflict, disharmony, lack of understanding. That is why I sent this pumpkin to be to get a dip into the holy river so that its inner quality may change. At this, the people said, Are you joking or something? How can that be possible? He said exactly like this. This is what my message was. If you are unconscious, pumpkin is unconscious. The donkey is unconscious. Man is both unconscious and conscious simultaneously. As such as he is, he is unconscious. But he has the possibility of being conscious. If he does any act of rituals, prayers or anything unconsciously, there is no difference between him and a donkey. There is no difference between him and a pumpkin and he can continue to take the bath in the holy river, drink the holy water, there will be no transformation. For transformation, consciousness is needed. A different kind of understanding is needed. When you perform a particular act, there has to be understanding. A Buddha understanding, the understanding that we are all one, we are not aliens, we are not a strangers joined, we are bound to each other by a causeless force. There is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. The person who is sitting next to you is breathing you, sharing the same atmosphere, sharing the same air space. And yet still there is a conflict between you and that person. It is better to lead a worldly life of conflict. If you want to lead a spiritual life, the journey has to start in a different way. You have to begin somewhere. The first step is the most difficult. And when you have taken the first step, the process becomes spontaneous, slowly and slowly. Then there will be no conflict at any moment. So Buddhahood is the experience within. The experience of oneness, the experience of harmony, 
the experience that we are all one together, not aliens, then out of this experience, words overflow, energy field flows. These gave the same fragrance as that of a baby. The words create magic. They have a great transforming power. A look. Because in that look the master pours his entire energy towards you. When the words overflow, their arrangements, the gaps that he creates in between, the music that these words create, all carry, transmit the energy field through those words, through those compositions, he transmits his innerness, he transmits his message and such a commune is known as Sama. Sama means from the word Sam. A process of osmosis begins. Osmosis is a process wherein Two solutions of different concentration are separated by a semi-permeable membrane and the flow begins. And this flow continues until the two solutions become homogeneous of the same level of concentration. This process is known as sum and the whole effect is known as sum. The master is overflowing with one concentration, one understanding, one state of blissfulness that comes when the energy frees, is freed and flows freely through the various centers and you are ready to receive that bliss. It may be a silent communion, it may be a poetic communion, it may be a musical com communion, it creates an environment, environment of osmosis where the energy flows from the concentrated to the dilute solution and it continues until the two acquire the same level of concentration. This is the essence of sum. So Buddhahood is the experience within and out of this experience when words overflow, these have the same fragrance as that of a Buddha. You can overflow any master or any path only when it evolves out of your innerness. You cannot imitate. First the experience has to be within and then words will evolve out of your eagerness as your growth. Then words become magic. The moment these are, these overflow out of you, they immediately reach to the inner core like a bullet pierced through the heart of the one to whom it is. These are at rest like an arrow. Only then your words will have the fragrance of the master. 
and then it will not be the fragrance of the master but your own inner fragrance. The process of a spiritual journey is to attain to that effect that your words carry the fragrance, the energy field of the bliss that you have experienced within. The bliss, the harmony that you have acquired in the process of the inward journey. This is the process of transformation. A donkey cannot transform. A pumpkin cannot transform because it is a pumpkin. It is unconscious. It has a utility as it's at a certain level beyond which it has no utility. It does not have awareness. And if man does not use his awareness on a day-to-day -day basis, then there is no difference between him and a pumpkin, between him and a donkey. He is a pumpkin in human form. He is a donkey in a human form. Awareness is the one that brings the difference between you and the sentient one. A stone, a diamond has great healing properties, but someone has to use his awareness to utilize the healing power of that stone. On its own, the stone cannot heal you. The awareness is necessary. Vehicle has the capacity, the quality to transport you from one place to another. This vehicle needs to be provided to be provided a direction. Without the direction, the vehicle cannot take you to your destination. Consciousness, the awareness, is the direction that guides your feet to move towards the destination. Without that, in Sanskrit, this is known as Sarthi, the charioter. The chariot must have a charioter who guides the chariot yoked with five horses moves in the right direction. There are two words. Sarthi Sa means with. Rati means one who rides the chariot, one who is chariot, with the chariot. The moment you remove the chariot from there, it becomes a rati. A means absence of chariot. Chariot in your own terminology becomes implies the one who directs, who knows the every route. He is like the GPS system in the inner process of growth. And a means when that guide is absent. So arati is a word that is used for a dead funeral pile, a dead funeral body that is being carried on hers. That is known as arthi, the one that lacks the janitor. And sarthi means the charioter that consciousness is alive and that guides your steps towards your destination. Two words, 
Sarthi. Krishna is the chariot of Sarthi of Arjuna in the battle of Mahabharata. When Sa is removed, that togetherness of the chariot is no more, that consciousness is not accompanying you moment to moment, you are dead. You are without that chariot, that consciousness that must guide your steps during the small acts, during the big acts, during the small moments, during the bigger moments. Remember your essential nature is that you are eternal. You have always been here. There has never been a time when you was not here. However, the form has been different. Each time you assume the form, the body, mind, intellect, the ego sense, realms differ. An awakened one remembers this all. He has the awareness to remember it all. He has the awareness to remember it all if the need be there. And this is state of remembrance that he is eternal. And to live with that understanding is known as enlightenment. You have experienced your eternal nature and having experienced innerness your actions and words evolve as beauty and fragrance. You carry an aura around you. This is the reason when you hear the enlightened one talk about Buddhas, the Sariputras, the Subhutis, the Anands and Mahakashyaps, you feel more and more that the Master was actually there when Buddha lived. That the Master is the contemporary of Buddha and that he understands and reveals him not only because he shares the same consciousness, the same energy field, instead because he has experienced the Buddha directly when he was in the body. This is always so. When you have experienced the Buddhas in your inner consciousness, then you are embodiment of the Trinity, Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. Satya means truth. Truth is an experience. First, the experience of that which is, has to come to you. When that experience comes, then you live with that experience. Your life moves constantly guided by that experience of oneness. Your words, your movement, everything is guided by that. This is Shivam. You become eternal because, because truth is eternal. Beyond time and space, the moment you start living with that truth, manifesting that, you too become an embodiment of that. You too become that you too become eternal and when truth and the eternal is there, beauty follows. Sundaram means beauty and you are an embodiment of the scriptural injunction. Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. O Sat, Chit, Anand, Sat, Truth, Chit means consciousness that 
moves. Consciousness is the chariot that takes you from one place to another. It is the vehicle. It is the vehicle that takes you from one place to another. It is the vehicle that helps you to transcend from one realm of consciousness to another. And out of this confluence of truth and consciousness, the experience and the vehicle, you attain to a state of bliss ananda. In that case, it is the inner silence of bliss that assumes the form of words and overflows in the outer world. You remember telling you Inner beauty sometimes assumes the form of words. I have many times said this and I mean it. Inner beauty in your case sometimes inner beauty sometimes assumes the form of words and in case of in an ordinary one, this happens sometimes. Yes, this happens sometimes in an ordinary person. But in the awakened one, this is the only way. The only way he manifests, innerness manifests. Whenever he speaks, whenever he communes with you, whether it is a look, a silent communion, or the communion through the words, it is only the inner beauty, it is only the inner harmony, it is only the experience of bliss that he had experienced. The bliss that he is, a trinity of truth, eternal and beauty, or truth, consciousness and bliss, that which is his essence manifests each finite moment. Once you are vulnerable to that, you come within that magnetic, magical field, the awakened one, the process of transformation begins. You have to be aware moment to moment. Put aside your recalcitrant mind and the asinine intelligence understanding that flows out of it. So far with that understanding with that asinine understanding, what have you gained? Nothing but a life of conflict, a life of misery, a life of pain. Is this the way that you want to live your life? Or be a light unto yourself? So that the innerness gets illumined. And where there was Darkness, there is light. Where there was pain, there is happiness. Where there was unconsciousness, is consciousness. And you are the embodiment of truth, consciousness, 
and bliss. This is your reality. This is your innermost.